Welcome, everyone. So before we get started, I just got to do something. I've got a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old at home, and they have no idea what I do, so I just got to get this going to make sure that uh, I can <laughs> help them out. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about um, rolling your own images with uh, Packer using OpenStack. A um, little bit about Spencer and myself. Spencer is a cloud engineer for Selenia. He came to us from Boeing. He helps our customers with both OpenStack as well as DevOps process. Similar to some of the stuff we're doing here today. We've done what we're talking about today. We've done with uh, several of our customers in the field today. Um, I'm the VP of Operations for Selenia. Um, been working with OpenStack since about 2010. Uh, worked with some of the largest public and private clouds around the world. So just a quick word from our sponsors. These are the nice folks of Selenia that brought us here today. Um, our focus is open infrastructure. We are purpose-built around cloud computing. Our team comes out of the OpenStack community. OpenStack ex experts have been contributing to the project basically since it started. We've got a proven delivery model, some differentiating IP, Goldstone, if you had an opportunity to stop by our booth earlier this week um, to help people operate clouds at scale. And our team comes out of the cloud computing space, and we understand how enterprises take on this new type of infrastructure. A um, couple of customers, uh, we're working with Deutsche Borsa in Germany, financial services space. We're headquartered in San Francisco. We've got office in uh, uh, Seoul um, in the U.S., soon to be Japan as well. So what are we going to talk about today? Image building is a pain, right? We all have to do it, maintain these images, get them through the environment. So this is what Packer is about, and we'll give you a little bit of history on where it comes from. We'll get an introduction to templates where we talk about how they're built and how they're constructed. Um, some of the building blocks uh, of a template, a, a builder helps you understand or, or build for a specific cloud. Packer is designed to work with OpenStack as well as Amazon and others. Uh, provisioners, what are you going to do to your image as you're, as you're constructing it? What are you going to add to it? What configuration changes you need and so on? Post-processors, where does it live? We put it into Glance in this case. Um, Spencer is going to test the demo gods today for us um, and do an actual live demo of this running through. He's going to show you how to install it, get OpenStack ready, get all the information you need out of your OpenStack installation to actually do it. We'll do, go through some building basics. We'll do testing because if you're not testing, you're not working, right? Everything has to be tested. Code isn't done until it's tested. And go through and actually build a base image. So, you know, when I talk about image building stinks, you know, we... we Talk with our customers about baking and frying. No software project is done without a good metaphor, right? Um, so we talk about baking and frying. I mean, it's a very simple example. When you're frying, you're adding ingredients one at a time, and you're cooking the, cooking the dish real time, right? When you're baking, you assemble everything, you put it all together, you put it in the oven, and it comes out, it comes out all at once. So there's no sort of complicated process. The advantage you have over uh, baking and frying, when, when you're frying, when you're, when you're, when frying is really about bringing a VM online, in the, in the, to, to complete the metaphor, and installing stuff as the machine comes online. When you do that, you have to test as it comes online. So you get the advantage of not having to test. When, when you test once when you bake, you, you add your functionality to the VM, you do your testing, you bake it, seal it up, deliver it, and you're able to make sure you use it over and over. The other advantage you have is the virtual machines will come online significantly faster. This is pretty critical when you're looking at an auto-scaling environment. You want a, a VM to come online and start taking workload very quickly. If you're not frying things into that VM as it comes online, that VM can come up and really take on that load much more quickly. So, you know, typically, when you're, when you're looking at building an image, it's a collection of bash scripts. You hope they run. You, maybe you test them, maybe you don't. You put it out there, see what happens. Um, you know, base images tend to be different. They drift over time. The idea behind uh, Packer it gives you that model of infrastructure as code. We all talk about it. This is a great way to codify your image building process. Take a Packer template, keep it in Git, version it. When it changes, you know when it changed. Git is good about telling you who changed it and how they changed it, and you're able to get that history of the virtual machine. You know, typically, if you're just versioning a QCOW image, for example, they're much harder to version control, right? With the Packer code being in Git, you're really able to get that, get that going, and then you're wondering where your configuration management scripts live. Are they on a dev box? Are they on my laptop? Where does that live? And you want to make sure your virtual machines are spinning up the same way every time, and once you've baked in those configuration settings, you're really able to, to, to have that consistency in the environment. Um, the other problem when you sort of do this with, without these tools, and, and Spencer will show you all this, is great log output. 
so you can really see what has gone on here. You can use it. Some of our customers are using that as an audit process. What actually happened to this VM when it came online? Did the image get built correctly? Or you can really use it to get through the whole process. So what is Packer? Uh, probably a lot of people have used Vagrant before. Packer is developed by the same group at HashiCorp uh, to, to, to bring this to market. Um, it automates the image creation process, a wide variety of clouds, not just OpenStack, but uh, it, it'll support VMware environments, it'll support Amazon Compute Engine, in, including also do Docker images. So you can actually have you know, version and control Docker images the same way. Um, the templates are easy to write and version control, and Spencer will show you that. You'll see the templates, they're really straightforward. And you can actually create several images at the same time. So if you are supporting a hybrid environment, you need to output images for two, for two cloud infrastructures, you're able to do that with Packer as well. So you have that consistency. And we all talk about immutable infrastructure. How do you get there? This is it. Where you have that straight through path and everything sort of follows the right course. You, you, you know what your infrastructure looks like all the time. So just a quick intro to templates. They're JSON formatted, very straightforward. There's three major sections to them, and Spencer will show you how those work. There's builders, provisioners, and post-processors. And you really just sort of, it's almost like a fill in the blanks, and you can use a lot of different tools. The example today that Spencer is going to show us is all about Ansible. But you, can use, you can use just about anything you need in that, in, in that location and sort of fill that out. And the post-processor uh, tells you where it's going to live. So with that, Spencer is going to start testing the demo gods for us <laughs> and run through. Yeah, so first I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the different building blocks that Seth just mentioned. So uh, the first is builders, and that's going to be something that's required in your templates every time, right? You've got to have some cloud to build against, um, and it can be a m multiple clouds at the same time, right? So it can be a Docker image, uh, it can be an OpenStack VM, uh, Amazon, Google Compute Engine, VMware, uh, if you're doing that stuff. Um, and if you'll take a look at the code block on the right, this is going to be... Um, this is what I actually use to talk to our OpenStack cloud and our, our test cloud, right? So uh, there's, some, there's some things you have to know about your environment uh, going in, and I'll show you guys that in a second. Um, under that, you'll also see uh, a, a Docker type, right? So you can base it off a of Ubuntu image, uh, export it as a tar, and then you know, take it wherever you want. Uh, the second thing is going to be provisioner. So this is going to be our do stuff portion of our image bake. Um, Packer is going to log into our instance via SSH, and it's going to provision it the way that we tell it to. Uh, provisioners run in serial, one after the other, so you chain them together um, to do all your stuff in one go. Like I said, when we do our second example, you'll get a, a better idea of this. Uh, we're going to do several things. <coughs> and so there's lots of options. Um, file uploads, shell scripts, uh, Ansible playbooks that we're going to use today. Uh, we're going to use all three of those. You'll see them. Um, but you can also do Chef, Puppet, Salt, whatever you've got going on. Um, and then this code block, so uh, just to give you guys a, a snapshot of what provisioners look like inside of a template. So uh, the top one's a, just uploading a file to a known path. So I've got a tar, a tar archive. Uh, give it a source locally, give it a destination. It plops it out there for me, right? Uh, and then we can act upon that. And then secondly, we can do a shell. Um, this is, I'm using the inline shell here. You can also, if you've got scripts already written, um, you can simply use those. Uh, but here I'm just doing an app get update and installing Ansible, right? And then finally, uh, post-processor. So this is, after your image bake is complete, what do you do with it? Um, you're not going to use it for OpenStack or Amazon, actually. Uh, there's nothing out, out there for post-processors to, to use. But if you're doing things like uh, VMware baking, right, you can register your image in vSphere. Uh, if you're using the VirtualBox builder, you can create vagrant files, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, and then the example I've got here is uh, using, if I'm doing a Docker image, I can tag it. Uh, with a version number, uh, the repository, and then push it to uh, the hub or a private registry that we're hosting internally. So um, installing Packer is, is super simple. It's a zip file, right? Um, you, you unzip it, throw it in your path, and you're ready to roll. Um, that's the Linux way to do it. If you're on a Mac, it's just a brew install. Um, and there's a couple installation links there, too, if you guys are interested in that. Um, so this is uh, the way that we gather the info we need for OpenStack, right? So the first thing is make sure you've got SSH allowed in your security group. Um, you're going to hit that the first time, or at least I always do, right? A new cloud, uh, baking an image, it's going to fail the first time. I haven't en enabled SSH. Um, and then Packer is going to use the environment variables from your, uh, your Keystone source file. So source that stuff. It's going to know your Keystone endpoint. Uh, it's going to know um, what else is it going to get out of there. Uh, your admin credentials, all that good stuff. 
Um, then you're going to need some unique IDs. So uh, the, the example I'll show you today is basing off of uh, basing off of a Ubuntu image uh, that, that I just downloaded from you know Ubuntu's cloud website. Um, and I'm going to find that image ID with a glance image list. Um, then we're going to get a desired network uh, with Nova Netlist. And then in my environment, uh, an, Im an instance will come online, connect to the private network, and then I'll give it a, a floating IP right, so I can connect to it. Uh, and I'm going to find that with a floating IP list. Um, so this is going to be, I'm going to show you two examples, or try to show you two examples. We'll see. Um, and the first one's going to be super simple. right? So um, I'll walk you guys through this. I'll launch it, and then we'll go through, we'll talk about testing, and then we'll look at it. So um, this is just a builder, right? So you have to have a builder. It's all you have to have. But this isn't going to do anything interesting, right? Um, it's going to launch an instance. It's going to give it an image name, and it's going to take a, a snapshot. Uh, and then it's going to tear down. That's pretty much it. So, uh, so I'll kick this off. Like I said, we'll, we'll see it. Um, we'll get familiar at least with the, al the output. And then um, I'll, I'll talk about testing. So. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, source my Keystone files, and then I'm going to uh, so I'll let that run in the background while we talk about testing a little bit. This one's really quick. Like I said, there's no provisioners. Um, it's going to be pretty simple. Um, so the first thing uh, w when it comes to testing your templates is using Packers built-in. So there's a Packer command called validate. Um, it it's, works pretty well. I haven't had any issues with it, right? It's going to let you know uh, if there's things wrong with your JSON, something's formatted the wrong way, uh, if it expects anything to fail. So if it returns successfully, uh, you get the output we see in the code block there, and that's from the example one that I just built. Um, other ways to check JSON, there's a jsonlint.com tool. Um, I haven't used that that much for Packer, but it's out there. I've used it for other things. It's handy. Um, and then your provisioners, if you're going to test those guys, it depends on what provisioner you're using. Right? If you're using Bash scripts, that's different than testing Chef Cookbooks, Ansible Playbooks. Um, testing Bash is hard. Uh, but yeah, Ansible Playbooks have a dry run built in, um, the dash dash check flag. It'll do a dry run and you know, test that for you. Um, and then finally, trial and error is helpful. right? So give it a shot. Build an image, see if it works, see if it performs the way you expect it to. Um, Throw away the instance after you're done. Sorry, I keep going the wrong way there. So um, we can see we're finishing up here. Glance is creating our, taking our snapshot. But um, you can kind of see here uh, what's happening. So uh, OpenStack first is going to verify the flavor that I passed in. Um, and that flavor is going to be a small. right? It's going to find that flavor, make sure it exists, and create a temporary key pair for us. And so Packer will create a, t a key pair and tear it down after it's done. So you don't have to mess with keys and all that good stuff. And then it's going to launch my server. So once my server is up and running, uh, the floating IP we talked about uh, gets attached. And then um, when you get to about here, you see we connected SSH, and then we stopped. Right? We didn't give a provisioner, so there was nothing for it to do. Um, once it's up, SSH'd in, it's got nothing to do. So um, we can see that as far as output, it created this image, uh, Selenia example one. And then gave it a UUID, right? So um, if we head out to our OpenStack installation, I can see that it's been created, maybe. So there it is on the top. Um, it's, th it's the one on the top. I've baked several images today in preparation. <laughs> but, um, but it's going to be that guy right there. So, um, so it's, it's there and it exists. It's ready for use. And so what I'm going to do now, actually, I'm going to go back a slide, but I'm going to kick off the second example um, because it's much longer than the first one. We're actually going to do some provisioning, and I'll walk you through what we're going to do. So. I'm going to throw a time command in there just so we know how long it took. So we'll let that run in the background uh, while we walk through the things we're going to do. So. Hypothetical example here. Um, say we're creating a an enterprise image, right, for our business. Uh, we need things baked in, uh, certain things we want all of our images to have and, and inherit, right. So um, the first part's going to look extremely similar to the last part, um, the, the exception of the image name. So I'm using a Packer has some built-ins around 
you know, I can timestamp my images, I can use some variables, things like that. So it's another kind of little more advanced feature to explore, but um, I get, you know, I give a date, a date uh, so we know when it's created, we know we're using the right image. Um, and then I'm inheriting this source, um, which is the Ubuntu image that I talked about earlier. And then, you know, the networks, the floating IPs, that, all that stuff's the same. So, um, so then we get into our provisioners, uh, which is a little new. So uh, we do the file type, um, and I'm going to take several different files and I'm going to put those into temp Ansible. And so those files are going to be an NTP configuration, uh, message of the day, we're going to add that into our image, and then um, something else I keep forgetting, DNS servers, right? So I'm going to point my image at, at Google's DNS server as just an example. And then, uh, then we're going to roll into a shell script, right? So this is an inline shell. Um, Packer will package all this stuff up, SCP it over, and then just run it as a shell script. So I'm going to sleep for five seconds. Packer, sometimes as, as your images come online, or your instances come online, it gets a little bogged down, so you know, wait a second, basically. Um, and then we're going to do an app get update and install Ansible. So uh, Ansible requires several different things. Uh, it's kind of too long of an install, really. But um, install a C compiler, we install the Python dev tools, and then we'll do a pip install of Ansible. Once Ansible is installed, um, we'll run the Ansible local provisioner. And so um, the way this works is, is this playbook fi file that I've, I'm passing in gets SCP'd onto the instance, um, and then Ansible will run that on against the local host, and then it will clean it up after it's done. All right, so, um, so here is the playbook that we're going to use. So if you've never seen Ansible or YAML files, it's extremely straightforward. Um, it's kind of self-documenting, which is a good thing for your enterprise. Um, so you'll see that it's going to run against localhost, like I said. Um, it's going to use the remote user Ubuntu, and then it's going to have root access, right? So some of the things we're doing require root, so it's going to use it. Uh, and then there's several tasks. So like I said, we're going to build an enterprise image. Uh, we're going to put our message of the day out there with a Selenia banner saying, hey, this is our, in our image. You know, unauthorized access is prohibited. And then we're going to create a temporary, or a standard username cloud user and make sure he's present on that system. So I'm using a state equals present there, um, which is kind of interesting, right? So Ansible will look, make sure that user exists. If it doesn't, it will create it. If it does, it won't mess with them. Um, and then we're going to inject an SSH key for that cloud user, right? So I've trimmed the SSH key out because it's extremely long, but um, it's my public key. That way we can SSH in after it's done. Um, and then next, we're going to add a Java app repository. So this is a pretty common use case for, you know, for a lot of different companies, right? So if I'm hosting app repositories internally, I'm hosting Yum repos internally, I can, I can use those. I can connect to those. Um, this is a public example. It's just the, the Oracle Java installer, uh, the app repository for that. But you get the idea. So um, next, we're going to do some hackery to accept Java's licensing. It gives you a terminal pop-up. You have to accept it. You have to agree to it. Uh, we're going to use devconf to work around that. And then um, finally, we're going to install the packages that we want on our system, right? So um, it's kind of a, this one's kind of weird looking, I guess, compared to the other ones. But um, you'll see that it's going to update the cache. Since we've added a new app repository, we need to do an, an app get update. Um, and then it's going to iterate through those three items and install those packages for us, right? So NTP, uh, UFW, uncomplicated firewall. Um, and then the Java 7 installer. So um, once that's done, we're going to lay down the files that we want to use. So I, we, I talked about an, the NTP comp file. Um, we'll give it a source of temp Ansible. If you remember from earlier, we put it out there the first thing. And then we're going to put it in the etsy ntp.conf directory. Right? Um, after that, we're going to um, update our resolve comp with our custom DNS servers. Like I said, these are just the Google servers. Um, but you know, if you've got your own, your internal, your, your data center, you can use those. Um, and then finally, we're going to turn on our firewall, um, make sure it's enabled, make sure logging is turned on. And then we're going to allow port S the SSH port. And that's the only port we're going to allow through our firewall. So that said, um, let's see if it's done. It's creating the image now. So um, we can walk through kind of what's happening here, and then um, We'll launch it and kind of take a look. So you can see that there's lots of logs. <laughs> um, 
you, you can you know you can see exactly what's happening as it's provisioning your scripts as it's running your provisioning scripts. So there's that connecting to SSH we talked about earlier. Uh, I'm sorry there, and then uh, you can see that it goes through. It's uploading those files that I mentioned uh, into that temp Ansible path. And then it's going to provision with the shell script that we gave it, right? So the first thing in that shell script um, is simply an ls of that directory so that you can see kind of what got put out in temp Ansible. So there's a base file, there's a message of the day, um, there's an NTP conf. And then we're going to roll into an app get update, right? So this is going to be a ton of output. Um, and then, so that's the end of the update, sorry. Um, and then here's uh, us installing GCC and Python dev tools and all that good stuff. So like I said, this is extremely verbose output here. Um, it goes on for quite some time. Um, once it's done with that, kind of look at pip. So here's installing pip. Um, and then here is where pip is installing Ansible, right? So uh, you start downloading Ansible there. Um, all that stuff's getting installed via pip. And then once that's done, we finally roll into our provisioning with Ansible. Um, so now we start doing that. Uh, our playbook gets put into temp uh, packer provisioner Ansible local. And then it, it runs that play playbook against the local host. So um, Ansible's output is really quite nice, right? It sees that you can see that here's what changed on the local host. Uh, it tells you if it didn't change, it'll just say OK, kind of like the gathering facts looks here. Um, but you can see all those things we just talked about, right? Message of the day, our users have been created, uh, our app repository is installed, Java's installed. Here's uh, installing NTP, UFW, and then laying down our configuration files. Um, once that's done, the server stopped. Um, we've created our image with a name of Selenia example 2 image uh, and a date stamp. And then we've got our image ID there as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch this guy. Uh, we'll launch an instance. We'll SSH in. We'll take a look at it, make sure it looks the way we expect. Um, but in the meantime, Seth's going to talk a little more about baking and frying. While this launches, it takes a second. So, so yeah, I think the, the, the nice thing that you can do with this process, you, maybe you have multiple groups that are responsible for different components, security being one. Maybe somebody's maintaining different sets of patches. Maybe you have... Um, a, a custom authentication module that you need installed on your on, on your virtual machine on your excuse me on your VM VMs to have them to authenticate to the right place right so you can use this code concept this code construct for people to not just build an image once but actually iterate on an image right take an image up you know if this is sort of the the initial step some of the stuff we're doing here is really straightforward but you can sort of see how the complexity can grow over time and then people can take this image that Spencer is now spinning up and add more stuff to it and turn it over again. And people can continue to do that. You know, for, for most of our customers, there's one group that basically maintains sort of the base OS configuration. Um, and then there's a different group that handles, you know, this is the Java application setup that we use, or this is the, the Ruby platform that we use. Right? Whatever those different configurations are in your environment, you can really make sure that people are using the same set of code every time as they iterate through and, and, and use the, the different components or add to it for, their, for the components they need to run their particular applications or functions within your environment. Perfect. Uh, so we just went into active. Um, we can kind of check this guy out and make sure it's coming online. It'll still take a second. You know, networking's got to get set up and all that good stuff. Um, but once it's done, we'll log in. So I mean, the nice thing we've also seen with, our, with a lot of our customers is in a lot of times, the people that are maintaining images in an organization aren't necessarily uh, have a ton of software development experience. The really nice thing about this process is it's very software centric, very uh, code centric, right? It, it's, a good, it's a good, really straightforward way to get started for those groups. You're using Git, you can actually have Jenkins trigger a build, for example. You know, your, your images can be stored in Nexus or Artifactory, whatever that is, right? You can get all those things going, and it's a, it's a great framework to get people started and, and, and prove out how infrastructure as code can actually change your environments and the way you guys operate. So we're up and running now. Um, we'll test this first by SSHing as that cloud user we created. Uh, make sure he exists in our system. Accept this. Type. Um, once VPNs are fun, right? Come on. 
Okay, so you can see that a uh, couple of things that we added are already you know, visible in our image. So um, if I do a who am I, I can see that I'm this cloud user. He exists on the system, we've logged in. So his SSH key is there, um, as well as our message of the day, right? This is property of Selenia, or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna exit, and I'm actually gonna log in as the Ubuntu user because some of the stuff I wanna show you requires root. Um, so l let's take a look at the things we added. Um, you can take a look, make sure Java got installed. Uh, seems to be working as expected. So there it is, it's installed, it's the version we wanted, it's 1.7. Um, then we can take a look at our NTP servers, make sure they're set up. Um, NTPQ uh, dash P is the print flag. Um, we can just see that our, th our three servers that we added are there, um, you know, our NTP is keeping in sync. Um, and then finally, we will do a sudo ufw status. You can see that our firewall is active. Uh, port 22 is allowed. It's the only thing allowed. It's what we wanted, right? So that seems to work as expected. Um, and we can review. Sure. So you know, for Every place we, w we, we work with, they always have some type of image building process and they want to be able to modernize it. And we're in th the first thing we hear is, well, it's so hard, how can we change the way we're doing it, right? But the reality is, you sort of seen the constructs here, they're fairly straightforward and you can see how they can scale out pretty easily. Packer is a great tool for this problem. It really gives, getting people working in the same code base, same code framework is a great way to make sure that this is successful. And that, that, like I said, that example where you really have the ability to show, uh, show people what infrastructure as code means, right? In, in for, for a lot of times in, in, in some of the, the, the large IT departments we work with, they want it, they, they think they want it, they, they, want it, they want to understand it, and this is a really great sort of uh, first way to do it. And then the ability to build multiple images at a time is extremely powerful because that will really keep you on track and making sure you're, you're using that straight through process if you have to go back and forth too many times, you're not sure where you're going to get out at the end. So keeping that running for your environment is pretty powerful. So with that, we can throw it out to some questions. Let me start up here. We've got a, we've got a Q and A mic apparently too. So if you guys want to, well, we can catch it on the video at least. Sure. Thank you. Um, uh, we have uh, seen you, you can configure your, um, uh, script uh, to build the image, um, but I didn't see how to test the the image in a automatically way, not just uh, manually. You, uh, we do we have any framework or um, so you're tools so you're asking once the image is created, how do I go about testing that automatically? Right, um, Packer doesn't provide you a way to do that. But you could certainly do that using you know, Jenkins to say, you know, a new image has been created, let's boot it, let's run these set of tests that we've written. Right? Okay. So it's kind of on you, but you can definitely do that. Thank you. Sure. Another question behind you. How do you manage your catalog of images once they've been built? Because it's sort of like we build an image and then the next day there's a security release for the kernel and that image is no good anymore. So, you know, a lot of our customers do that differently. There's the, Packer specifically doesn't have the facility to catalog images. You know, you can use Glance and, um, and, and sort of track them that way. And, and, and if you're using your name correctly and that, the output there, you can use that as a, as a way to sort of manage that. There's uh, also different, you know, service catalogs that you can use inside an enterprise to, to show companies, to show people this is the latest image. Um, you know, the idea behind some of this, you know, if there's a latest patch, you know, you get a patch that comes out today, does it need to go in the environment right now? Well, if your environment's fully dynamic, you can take that, new, take that new image, publish it, and then everyone can quickly iterate and redeploy their applications, right? The idea behind this is to have the, this, this full CI process where you can redeploy applications very quickly, right? And, and having, you know, sort of this framework, you know, you know gets you that and it, through, through whatever the standard catalogs are today. Have you guys had any uh, problems with broken images on OpenStack? Like, uh, I've been I've been using uh, Packer with Amazon, which works pretty much flawlessly. Right. Um, and then on OpenStack, our cloud uh, continually end up with broken images. And I'm not sure if it's a Packer issue. Maybe it's a configuration right. image, uh, configuration image, uh, configuration issue on our uh, platform. All right. 
Um, I, I haven't had a ton of the images being broken. I've had some, some of the builder being broken. You know, it's specific versions of OpenStack and specific versions of Packer, they'll be show-stopping bugs. You've got to kind of resolve that one way or the other, right? You've got to upgrade OpenStack or fall back to an older version of Packer where this worked, something like that. One of the things we've also seen a little bit is it, you know, this is, you know, for one of our customers actually booting an ISO to, to get this rolling, and that ISO was mounted across a wide area network, right? So those types of things, you know, you might want to just check your environment for, right? Make sure it, it, Packer's moving around a lot of data. With Amazon, it's not, right? Because it's, it's spinning it all up in Amazon. You know, maybe you're pushing some packages out to it, but if you're booting from an ISO and doing a kickstart, there's a lot of data moving around the network, so make sure all these systems are close enough to each other in, from a network pr pr proximity perspective to have the fast access that you need. A couple of things. First of all, thank you very much for coming out and doing this. It's nice to see some uh, real world examples and the demo gods shine on you. So <laughs> I wanted to actually uh, provide a little feedback to the question on revisioning uh, Packer instances. Um, I simply use version tap and version number strings within the Packer image itself, and then I create an app job that captures a Packer log Thank afterwards you. and puts that into Git, so I can track everything that came out of Packer against the version number. So every time okay. there's a change in the version number, you can uh, do a Git pull on the log and, and look at what has actually changed. And that kind of goes back to your point early on for security audit purposes. You can see what's been uh, in the Packer image. Um, my questions for you are: um, I hate JSON. It's, it's a machine serialized <laughs> language. It's not meant to be a human hand hammered configuration language. And it really annoys me. Uh, it's not your problem, I know. <laughs> but, um, have you found any good tools uh, within Packer? I find Packer just chucks an error that's useless for the most part. And uh, have you found any good tools for debugging uh, uh, JSON syntax uh, for Packer specifically? Because you have uh, the key pairs that have to match and m match with the. Uh, JSON uh, 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 template for Packer itself as opposed to just, it, it may actually validate with JSON lint successfully, but it may be invalid. Right. Yeah, Packer. I've hit that a few times where it looks fine on JSON lint, it doesn't look fine in Packer validate, or it craps out when I go to so pay. Usually then it's just Russian roulette and whether you finally <laughs> figure out, okay. Some of it's definitely, you know, doing things the Packer way, right? It's certain okay. things it expects, but. Okay, great, thank you very sure. much. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, one more question. Does Packer support uh, Windows Azure uh, platform or Windows OS image? I think there's an Azure builder. Sure. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure there is too. Sure. Uh, okay. I haven't okay. used it, or how good it is. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure there is one. Anyone else? Anything else? Anyone else? Great. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Enjoy the rest of the week.